right, I'm going to give you a couple of little tips for this poem as well as you dive in and start um, your analysis of it. The first thing I want you to do is think about the title, which is Barbie Doll. When you think of Barbie, I just want you to pause for a minute and consider what your associations with Barbie are. Are they good? Are they bad? Are they positive? Are they negative? Um, are, are they neutral? Do you not have any? But think about what that image of a Barbie doll is before you read the poem and then really try to figure out what Barbie doll represents in this factual poem itself. This poem was written um, by a woman named Marge Piercy. So, as with the others, I'm going to read it to you before I start directing you um, for some things to look at with your analysis. Barbie doll. This girl child was born as usual and presented dolls that did PP and miniature GE stoves and irons and wee lipsticks the color of cherry candy. Then, in the magic of puberty, a classmate said, You have a great big nose and fat legs. She was healthy, tested intelligent, possessed strong arms and back, abundant sexual drive and manual dexterity. She went to and fro apologizing. Everyone saw a fat nose on thick legs. She was advised to play coy, exhorted to come on hardy, exercise, diet, smile, and wheedle. Her good nature wore out like a fan belt, so she cut off her nose and her legs and offered them up. In the casket displayed on satin, she lay with the undertaker's cosmetics painted on, a turned-up putty nose, dressed in a pink and white nighty. Doesn't she look pretty? Everyone said, consummation at last, to every woman a happy ending. Okay, so this is a bit um, chilling, <laughs> and um, I just want to, again, direct you in some things to start looking at. I kind of want to look stanza by stanza and point some things out here. Um, what do you make of this idea of a girl child. Why this word? Why not a specific name? Why does Marge Piercy choose to use that particular word? And then think about, too, what all of these here could represent. So, dolls, miniature stoves and irons, okay, wee lipsticks. Those are all physical objects, but what do you think they represent? And then, of course, we have a colon, so we should always pay attention to colons. And notice that she's moving through an age progression, girl child, and then puberty. So this is what happens in her childhood, and this is what is happening now in puberty. What do you make of these three lines here? They're almost clinical, scientific. Why do you think? What do you think could be the point of that? And then after this scientific, clinical, detached, removed, factual description of her, we get she went to and fro apologizing. And well, that should raise the question, well, why? And then everyone saw a fat nose on thick legs. Who is everyone? So we've gone from a classmate, right, saying it, teasing her, to everyone. And this everyone isn't saying, this everyone is seeing, okay? So what's the difference there? What's happening? 
there's some words in this stanza that you definitely need to look up. What do those words mean? And here you have a passive construction. She was advised. Was advised by whom? Okay. And here we have a simile, a comparison using like or as. Why is Piercy comparing her nature to a fan belt? What does that mean when a fan belt wears out? Why that particular comparison? What's the significance of it? And then we get gruesome. She cut off her nose and her legs and offered them up. To whom? Did she really cut off her nose and her legs? I don't know. But then we find in the casket displayed on satin, she, she lays with the undertaker's cosmetics painted on. So she's in a casket here. And look at this question mark. Doesn't she look pretty? Well, she's dead. And again, we have this everyone. Who is everyone? What does consummation mean? You need to look that up too. And then every woman. So we've gone from a girl child as young growing into puberty, and then every woman. And what is the happy ending? What is the tone of that last line? Are we supposed to read that as irony? Perhaps, because the girl in the poem is dead. So what do you think Piercy's getting at in this poem? What is she saying um, in the context of this poem? So I want you to think about it. This, this is just the beginning to start on your analysis.